Hello Capricorns, how are y'all doing? Here is your August 2017 reading. I hope you all had a good month in July and let's see what's happening for you all in August. Um, so really briefly, we'll go over the astrological aspects that are happening, especially I'm more so concerned this month with the, with the, um, what's happening with the moon, um, with the eclipses that are going to be occurring. Um, so we have on August 7th, we have a lunar eclipse that's going to be happening with the full moon in Aquarius, and that's going to be occurring in your second house. Um, and then we have, uh, a solar eclipse on August 21st, which is coinciding with the new moon in Leo, which is going to be happening in your eighth house. So what does that mean? So the second house, which is the house of Taurus, you know, house of Venus is um, one of the houses of Venus. Um, it's the house that has to do with uh, how you value yourself, your possessions, your own material possessions, um, how you use your abilities, your talents, your what, you know, whatever it is that you have to offer to create and generate income or create and generate resources for yourself. Um, it has to do with the things that you possess. Are you in possession of yourself? Um, or do you possess other things in, in lieu of possessing yourself, right? Um, so second house very much has to do with my own value, my own resources, how I make my own resources, what I think of my own resources and what I think of my own ability to create my resources. Um, and so those are issues that have to do with second house and with a lunar eclipse happening, right? Um, so, you know, first and foremost, full moons always represent culminations, endings, things coming to a climax, old cycles, old patterns being cycled out, um, being sort of, you know, fettered out and pushed out, things that no longer have any use to you, the full moon comes and pushes those things out. Um, and in conjunction with it being a lunar eclipse, right, lunar eclipses being being astrological moments where we get to recognize and sort of face the shadow aspects of ourselves, moments where we get to face and look at the parts of ourself, you know, the cycles, the parts of ourself that aren't really serving us, that aren't, you know, or parts that we need to kind of illuminate to do some healing around, right? So what... So what is your, what are you, and as being a Capricorn and as being, you know, a sign, you know, the, the, the archetype of Capricorn is incredibly self-sufficient, incredibly self-reliant, um, has the capacity and the willingness to, 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 to be self-disciplined and is responsible not only for themselves, but will take on responsibility for others, right? Um, will take on, will take on, you know, will, will not only fulfill their dreams or fulfill their career goals in the name of climbing the ladder for themselves, but does so in, in, in an effort to create sort of a dynasty for their friends and family or for whoever is to come after them, right? Capricorn is the dynasty builder. Um, Capricorn sees into the future generations and generations and generations down the line. Um, and so in terms of, you know, second house activity, what are, what do, like, what are, what, what are you in possession of? Um, what are you in control over? Um, you know, what, like, what, what do, what are, what are, what are the things or the, the methods in which you utilize to create and generate your own income? And are there things that need to be let go? Are there ways of generating income? Are, you know, is, is there going to be a loss of money, right? And, and does that loss of money, does that loss of your financial resources, does that decrease? Increase in, in 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 that financial resource or in your career or whatever is that loss going to affect how you um, sort of value and view yourself, right? Like, does are those are the two correlated? And if so, is it time to let go of that connection? Is it time to maybe build your value and build your sense of self on something bigger than just how much money income can I generate? And how responsible can I be to others? And how, what can I what possessions do I own? Like what out, outside of the material, you know, career, second house, 10th house realm, can you define and build your value on right like what needs to end about that what shadow aspects of 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 that part of who you are are no longer working for you you know and then we have the solar eclipse on august 21st which is happening in your eighth house right and the solar eclipse is going to also be in conjunction as they always are with the new moon it's going to be happening in leo um and the new moon 
you know, is always about new beginnings, new cycles, turning a new leaf, things starting, new opportunities coming in, you know, new ways of doing things. Um, it's, it's, it's newness, it's freshness and, 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 and being attached to Leo, right. Um, being very much in conjunction with, you know, it being a new moon in Leo, uh, it's like a new, exciting, vibrant, fiery kind of beginning. It's, it's not like a drab kind of dragging the feet. It's an explosive new beginning. It's a fiery new beginning, right? Um, and the eighth house represents, you know, opposing the second house, the eighth house is going to represent, you know, not my resources and my income, but another, like other, other, like shared income, shared resources, shared possessions. You know, if you're in a partnership, the eighth house could represent your partner's income or possessions, what your partner values, um, what your partner, you know, generates and creates. Um, it's also the house of death and transformation. Um, it's the house of, uh, you know, of, of um, you know, the, the phoenix that rises from the ashes, right? Like what needs to be broken down and, and, and completely like burnt down to the ground in order to build a new. Um, it's the house of self-conquering. It's the house of, you know, conquering others. Um, it's the house of power. It's the house of, um, you know, uh, occult practices. So all of those, all of those things, sex merging, like how do we merge emotionally, sexually? How are we merging financial resources? How, how are we merging possessions, right? So where the second house is about how self-sufficient can I be? The eighth house is how well can I merge with others? Like, how well can I blend my energies, whatever energies th those may be, with another with another human being, right? Um, and in that merging, how do I then destroy the tail ends of what's hanging out from that merger, right? As I come together and merge, what then is being cut off and died off or killed off from from my old sense of self, right? Like in this new merging, like how can I become one with this person or this entity, whatever it may be, right? Um, so that's what eighth house and the eighth house is very deep, 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 deep house. Um, and so with the solar eclipse happening there, what new beginnings are you having? You know, is there is there an inheritance that you may be receiving? You know, did somebody did a relative recently pass on and you're receiving inheritance from that? Um, you know, in lieu of you losing something or something coming to a close in your second house, my own personal resources, are you now being offered help, you know, through a partner through are you now receiving outside resources and from your eighth house activity, right? That solar eclipse in the eighth house bringing in new resources, but they're not your own, right? They're not going to, it's not going to be your own, it's your own resources is going to be from somebody else, a partner, family member, a deceased family member, um, outside, outside sources coming in to help you. Um, so that's what's going on with you all astrologically with the, um, the full moon and the new moon, both respectively in Aquarius and Leo. And, um, so now let's get into the reading. Um, sorry about that. Let's get into the reading. Um, I'm like doing a lot of cooking and stuff today and I keep forgetting that, um, I have stuff in the kitchen that's cooking. It needs to be turned down or turned off or taken out of the oven. So let's get started with your reading Capricorn. Ooh. Sorry, I have to get all the way up. Um, hmm. So when I was... I don't know if I mentioned this before I turned the video off, but um, when I was meditating with the cards beforehand, um, I kept hearing not accepting help, stubborn and unsatisfied, sort of disappointed. Um, maybe disappointment with the self. Um, and in that disappointment, I don't... And in that disappointment, um, projecting that possibly onto others. So what's happening for Capricorn for August 2017? Okay, 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 okay. Right off the bat, Nine of Swords. Um, something's worrying you. There's something that's draining you. There's something that, you know, the next card up from this, right, is the Ten of Swords. And that image is just like this figure laying down, being drained of all of its bodily 
you know, resources, right? So you're not too far from that um, with this energy here. Let's see what else is going on. Okay. Capricorn 2017, August 2017. Messages for Capricorn, August 2017. Messages for Capricorn. Capricorn sent me to hear these messages. August 2017. Okay. Oh my gosh. There. Uh, I, that was blurry. There's a lot going on. Yeah, like I mentioned before, you know, there is, I don't really see that, I don't really read this right now in it on its face as heartbreak, but I more so read it as, you know, what happens when you puncture a heart with a sword? is that it's going to be drained of its blood, right? It's going to be drained of its vital resource. So I just feel like there's a lot that's happening and there's a lot that's not, you know, going so well for Capricorns right now. Um, and But again, it's because it's only in your mind that it's not going so well. It's only in your... It's only in your... In, 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 in your mental capacity it's only it's only in your it's all in your head it's only in your head that it's not going so well um but in that rumination right when we begin to when we begin to be here all the time we begin to create this right and here you all are the devil right we begin we begin to create this energy we begin to generate this it comes out of nowhere um What's that? What's that? Psycho, psychosomatic, or there's some uh, the term that's used when we actually are able to create our own symptoms um, simply by believing and thinking that we have them, right? Um, and there's people around you. You have people that are willing to have your back and support you. You know, sometimes I do read this card as conflict between people or between your within yourself. But right now I'm really getting the vibe that these are people in your life that are there to support you, that are there to offer you um, a helping hand. Um, you have you have some people in your corner that definitely, definitely are down for you, you know. Um, yeah. There's an offering of support. There is, there's an opportunity for, you know, there's an opportunity for stepping into a zone or stepping into, you know, a situation where there is going to be some vulnerability. Um, there's, there, there's an opportunity where, and, you know, and in this cup, in this one cup, there are so many cups to be offered. There are so many things to be offered from, from this person or from this situation. But in order to take this cup, right, it's not a sword. It's not a pentacle. It's not a wand. It's a cup, right? And cups deal with emotions. Cups, cups deal with um, sensitivity and vulnerability and coming together. So, you know, in... In, 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 in the offering of this cup is also an invitation to break down some walls or to stop to stop fighting, right? To stop to stop fighting against this energy here. But in doing so, that requires us to go to a place when we accept help from people, when we, you know, and I mentioned before, 
um, you know, the words that came up and they came up and, you know, I swear to you, before I even looked up the astrological stuff that was happening with the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse, like I literally heard, you know, not accepting help. And I saw somebody with their arms crossed, just kind of not willing to accept any type of support. Um, or, or like the support that's being offered requires that you might have to go here, right? And be in a space of emotional vulnerability or be in a space where you're going to have to open up to this, to this hand, right? To whatever body, whatever being is attached to this hand and might have to open up and, and, and that there, there might be kind of like, you know, you, this this desire to want to maintain control and that this desire well if i take this one cup am i going to end up taking all these other ones too like what's like what you know what i don't want to get too carried away right because the seven of cups can also represent getting carried away um with you know our illusions our delusions um what we think is possible but really is not possible you know so there there's this fear that if i take this cup what ends up happening? Am I then at the whim of the hand that is attached to this cup, right? Um, and, and and it's really all in your mind. I don't know if I showed you all the cards, but these were the cards, right? And again, it's like going back to this ruminating, right? Going back to this overthinking of things and, and not recognizing that you know, meanwhile, while you're here by yourself thinking about things, like there are people that are actually on your side who are trying to figure things out and help you out. Um, but if you were to, yeah, accept that cup, you know, not wanting it to get out of hand and wanting and wanting, you know, Capricorns are very good at dealing with what is, you know, what is our, our hyper conscious, hyper aware, very observant and are aware of what is possible and is not possible in the in 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 in, in the physical world, right? This card does ha has very little to do with what's possible in the physical world. It is more so about the delusions and illusions that we can get carried away with. Um, when we're not careful about, you know, the, about this, about tapping into this energy too much. Um, the three of wands. Hmm. I see these two connected. I see there's something that's being waited on. You know, maybe some of you put invested in a project or invested in the expansion of a home, um, invested in, you know, a creative, a creative venture. And it, and you're still waiting for your, to hear the results of that, of that venture. You're still waiting to hear the results of what, you know, what it is, what did I send out and is it going to come back? And in that waiting, that anxiety, right? Bring, bringing, bringing some, bringing some fear that things didn't work out. Maybe you're waiting a little bit longer than you expected. Maybe you're waiting for a little bit longer than you expected to, you know, and it's not, you haven't heard anything quite yet. Can I, ooh, can I get clarification on the three of wands? Get clarification of the three of wands. Okay, well, we're not gonna. Ah. That was probably unnecessary. Yeah. You know, and the second house, what's happening in your second house, you know, you got you got the full moon in Aquarius. Here is the Aquarian card, the star. Our hopes, our dreams, our wishes. Um, our hopes for the future, things that we believe can be successful. And in clarification for the Three of Wands, definitely relating to, you know, a, a, a desire, right? And, 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 sorry. And being, um, being a card that represents Aquarius and being that Aquarius is in your second house, right? 
What hopes and dreams and wishes did you have for the future of your own material possessions? What hopes and dreams did you have about, you know, generating new resources, new income from your own ability and your own skill set? Like, what is it that, what is it that you set out? Like, what, what is it that you set out to create, right? And also, right, like, in what ways do we need to heal, because the second half is also about how we value ourselves. So what needs to change, right, in the way, like what needs to be healed about how you view your value and your worth, right? Is it are is your value and your worth resting on the laurels of this of this message or this venture being successful, right? Is that the only way? And if so, then that needs to be healed and transformed and changed, right? Um because that, that's not sustainable. That's not a sustainable way. And so now we have this Ace of Pentacles and the, the, the Two of Swords fell on top of it. We'll see if it ends up becoming relevant. It, it You know, it usually will, right? But I definitely see, you know, the Knight of Pentacles, here you are, this Earth sign, this slow moving, steady moving, earth, steady moving Earth sign. Um, but you kind of are covered with the Knight of Pentacles, right? And so, and then I feel that somebody has your back. I feel that somebody definitely, there is, there is an offer. There is, there is somebody that is like, wants to really support you and have your back and wants to, you know, cause this, the two of swords for me is also about, it's not about a stalemate or being, unsure of your own, you know, not being unable to make a decision or a choice or being at a crossroads. It's also for me represents a friend in arms, right? It represents for me and you know, and and, and, it, and even in some of the even in some of the guidebooks, right, for some tarot decks, the two of swords is described as, you know, a friend in arms or somebody who somebody who has your back. Um, somebody who will go to battle for you, right? Like I see these two battle like images, but I don't see this as conflict outside of yourself. I see this as people who are willing to fight for you and who are willing to help you, who are willing to go to battle with, for you, who are willing to, I don't want to say die, right? But we're talking about eighth house energies where these people are coming from, right? And, and that's, and that energy can be very much about, you know, it's very extreme. It's life or death, right? Um, but there's some sort of protection. There's some sort of, you know, there's something, there's some, there's, there's, you know, and once again, underneath this Ace of Cups, we have this lover's card. You know, we have this, we have, and, 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 and whatever, whatever is happening between these two people has been spiritually watched over or is being, you know, ordained by the angels. Can I get a clarification for the lover's card? Yeah, I definitely see. Here this person is again. Offering a cup. They have a cup to offer. They have they have support to offer. They have you know and it's legit. It's 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 substantial. It's not, you know, it's in the it's in the beginning stages. It's not a full blown king, right? Of pentacles. The offer still, you know, and especially according to the to the Capricornian, you know, standard, it's not it's not quite mature yet, but it's there, right? There definitely is a substantial emotional offer. If that emotional offer kind of grows into you know, a mature, a full-blown king, who knows what'll happen. But I, I definitely sense that there is the ability to kind of come together. And I don't read this so, I don't, and yes, it can represent a romantic relationship. Yes, it can represent, you know, a soulmate relationship that's coming in for some of you. But I, what I, what I really read this as, you know, especially representing, you know, especially since the eighth house is going to be so important for you all this month, is this merging, right? The lovers for me is not just about a soulmate, you know, whatever you want to call it, twin flame relationship. It's also about, 
the, the ability to merge, the ability to come together and to harmonize and to surrender to the power of a connection that you share with somebody, right? It's the ability to merge your feminine and masculine within you. It's your ability as Capricorn, it's your ability to recognize, you know, it's your ability to recognize that cancer within you. It's your ability to recognize that, yes, I am the strong, you know, very masculine you know, go get them kind of Capricorn energy. But on the on the flip side of my coin is that cancer, that nurturing, representing the moon, the mother, that nurturing, feminine, um, psychic, intuitive, in touch with what cannot be seen kind of energy that is present. So, you know, I do see this card as, you know, one's ability to merge, right, with with not only outer op opposing forces, right? Like this feminine and this masculine energy are able to come together and blend their energies really beautifully. But it's also the recognition that within me, I also have these two, right? These two sort of aspects of self. Like I'm not all one and I am not all the other. I am a blending of these, of these, of these energies, right? And that in blending and in the recognition of the internal blending, that you are both masculine and feminine, you are both Capricorn and Cancer, you are the mother and the father, Saturn and the moon, that you can recognize that these are all part of who you are, right? That that you then like that you then stop fighting with these people here who are trying to help you, who are trying to offer support. Um and then it's and then it becomes more like the three of cups kind of energy, right? Or that it might become like the four of wands energy. That if we like right and then these two figures here are in complete harmony with one another. So, and it's like, if you actually allowed yourself to receive support and foundational help from another person, look what you can actually build with this other person. Look what awaits you on the other side of, you know, you've gone from this by yourself to sort of fighting off the support that is there to being afraid of it, right? If I take the support, I lose control. You know, this person in this card doesn't really have very much control. I don't think, I don't feel that he, that this figure has control and, and, is, as, and is allowing his delusions and his illusions to get away from him. And Capricorn does not, you know, the archetype of Capricorn does not want that, does, does not, that's an unacceptable, that is not acceptable, that is not, you know, how we get down. Um, we are realistic in our approach to life. We are realistic in our approach to our emotions. We are realistic in our approach to the people in our lives. We do not ask them for help. We we do not, asking for help creates the conflict. Um, even if there is a, if there's an offer on the table, if I take that offer, then I lose all control and sense of reality. I don't, I lose touch, right? Um, but you know, if you actually decided to allow support and allow somebody else to help you build a new foundation, right? Because the eighth house, you know, to me also very much relates to that tower card of erasing faulty foundations and the rebuilding, the regeneration of new sturdy foundations, right? And that, you know, whatever, whatever ideas you had here about how you needed to operate in the physical world, were not working for you. Um, and that you needed support, right? And if you actually allowed support to come in, if you actually allowed the creative, the creative energies of others to come in instead of fighting them off, you could, you know, these five wands that are these wands that are kind of all over the place. They all have well, they all are well intentioned and have, you know, good intentions and mean you well. But they're all over the place, right? And if you just allowed if you just allowed these people in, this person in, um, these energies, these soft, these softer energies to sort of come in, these emotionally available energies to come in and help you out, 
then you could actually create, you know, then now these, these wands are sitting upright and they're organized in a way that is recognizable, right? And, and might be, you know, more acceptable on your standards. And now we're talking about a sturdy, stable foundation where we can see things from a different perspective, right? Um, where we, can I get clarification on this hangman? I definitely read it as seeing things from a different perspective, but something about something about martyr came to mind as well. So I want to get some clarification on the hang. Can I get clarification on the hanged man? Why is the hanged man here? Get clarification on the hanged man. Maybe they don't want to clarify the hanged man. Maybe. Okay, no, they don't want. Yeah, just seeing things from a new perspective. Um, this Ten of Cups came up, though, on the bottom of the deck. Uh, changing your ideas of what you think is ideal. Um, healing that, and that, and that, what is ideal can include emotional, can include emotional, you know, satisfaction, and can even include a little bit of this delusion and illusion, right? Like just because you know, sometimes we get to allow our minds to run away with us, not all the time, but sometimes, you know. But the allowing yourself to see things, allow like this hanged man has very little control over his situation right now. He's being hung upside down. So if he wants to leave, he can't. His hands are behind his back. So if he wants to do anything with his hands, he really can't. But in the suspension, in this inability to move and have absolute 100% bodily control, he sees things from a different perspective, right? It's like from here to here, right? And then this, with this halo around him, there's an enlightening. There's an enlightenment that's happening here, when we lose control, sometimes we need it takes sometimes it takes losing control in order to fully learn and to see things from a different perspective. Um, and that in being in this energy, right? In this in being in this union, right? In this stable union, in this shared union, we can actually see things from a different perspective. Um, let's do an pull an outcome card. For Capricorn for August 2017. Oh, the moon. So yeah, um, the moon is, uh, the moon wants to usher this in, right? The moon, that solar eclipse, I believe in your eighth house on the 21st, that new moon in August wants wants to usher this in, wants to bring this in, right? And these these two coyotes here are these wolves that are howling up to the moon. It's like subconsciously we ask for change and transformation. We call out to the moon. We call out to the spirit, to universe, to bring us these changes and transformations. And, you know, and, and, and we ask for them and then we get them, right? And so as this month goes on, the you know, the, the continuation of the shadow aspects of yourself being revealed, the continuation of, you know, um, whatever old ideas need to be, you know, revealed and, 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 and ended or, you know, new ideas that need to be brought into existence about your resources and your shared resources, right? Like these people are sharing resources here and it's really beautiful and it's awesome and it's allowing you to see things from a different perspective. You know, this page of pentacles continuously is coming up in every single reading. Um, and I and I believe what it's asking all the signs to do this month is to really look at your value and your relationship to your value and how you value yourself. Um, and are we being too, are we being too, you know, are we, are we stuck looking at our value or are we not looking at it too much? Like, right? Like what end of the spectrum are we on? Um, 
And it's really about knowing yourself and knowing your limitations and understanding that like the experiences that I've had here, right, can actually generate valuable lessons that I can look to here. Um, so yeah, I definitely see some, 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 some revelations, some realizations about, you know, how are you holding your, like, what value do you hold about yourself? Um, and how does that need to be healed as well? So that is your reading for this month, Capricorns. Um, I hope it resonates with you. If not, there are plenty of other readings that you can go and check out. Um, if it did resonate with you, you know, um, you can give it a thumbs up or write a comment, a comment below. And I will see you next month. And if you want a personal reading, you can hit me up at tattoosandtarot at gmail.com or you can go to my website, which is tattoosandtarot.com and go to the reading section. Um, and yeah, so happy August and see you in September. Bye.